This is your USMNT Abroad Weekend update from March 4th to March 6th of 2022. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Ministry and welcome to a channel favorite, as I always say. USMNT Abroad, where every Monday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the weekend and every Friday or Thursday, we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the midweek. Now, I just got back from Charlotte. The vlog for the game that I was attending is out with 70,000 plus people. It was a great experience. I, was, I looked like a kid the entire video, essentially just fulfilling my dream. But anyhow, go check out the vlog if you'd like. And remember one thing. I actually made this entire script with some games I watched, obviously, on Saturday and some that I watched Sunday morning when I was in the airport waiting for the plane for five hours. Yeah, no rest, not much sleep. Sleep's overrated anyway, so it doesn't matter. Now, before we start, don't forget to hit that like button or dislike button, whichever one you prefer. It doesn't matter to me. I would prefer the like button, but it doesn't matter. Whichever one you want is good with me. Any engagement is better than no engagement. And also, don't forget, if I don't mention a player, it's likely because he didn't play, because he's maybe injured or not available or just benched. So keep that in mind before you say, I forgot someone. All right. With that said, let's play the intro and let's start this Monday's recap. We're going to start with the player that we always start with, and that's Christian Pulisic from Chelsea. On Saturday, Pulisic started and went the full 90 minutes for Chelsea during their 4-0 win over Burnley. Now, Pulisic played a good part of the first half as a left winger, pinching inside like an inside forward slash inverted winger. Saul would be the one providing the width down the left flank, mostly. Throughout the match, a very fluid front three with Kai Havertz, Mason Mount, and Pulisic would switch up positioning very often. So we saw Pulisic play in both wings, the right and the left. Now, as for the second half, Christian Pulisic actually got a beautiful assist for Chelsea. A true assist. And it was a precise cross down the right flank. So, yes, he was playing on the right wing at that time to assist Kai Havertz off a header to get Chelsea their second goal. Now, Pulisic did not just stop there. He did also score the fourth goal for Chelsea. And, yes, I know, it was an easy one. Almost a tap in. An easy finish from very close range, assisted by the Burnley player himself. But Pulisic was still there, and he scored. That's a goal and an assist. Overall, Pulisic had a great game, obviously, go and assist, what else can you say? But most of it came into the second half. The first half, it could have been better. He did over dribble at times, he did also dribble into traffic a few times. Now, for this match, Pulisic had one goal, one assist, had 5 out of 10 successful dribbling attempts, 69 touches, nice. 89.5% passing accuracy, one key pass, one big chance created, and he also did win 10 out of 18 ground duels. One important thing that I do have to point out about this match is that this match was crucial for Leeds United as well and Jesse Marsh, as Burnley are a direct rivals to Leeds United against relegation. Leeds did lose the first game under Jesse Marsh 1-0 to Leicester, and to be fair, they did fine and only allowed one goal against a top six offense in the league. Under Bielsa, they were averaging close to three goals per game allowed, so there's improvement there. I personally don't expect them to be relegated. Yeah, I just wanted to add that, that Leeds United did look better under Jesse Marsh with a more zonal pressing system rather than a man marking pressing system. The defense seems to be fixed. If the defense is fixed, the points will come because their offense is good. They created. They just got unlucky against Leicester. I just wanted to say that, that despite Jesse losing the first game, I would be very optimistic if I was a Leeds United fan, but I'm not. Next up is Weston McKinney from Juventus. This week, we got the confirmation by Allegri that Weston McKinney is done for the season. It's bad news, but it's very much expected at this point. He should be fine and good to go early next season. Now, it is important to say that at least Weston's on a good mood on crutches, but enjoying LAFC Portland match in MLS. Next up is Giovanni Reina from Borussia Dortmund. Reina is now back in training. The return date is not set yet, but there are reports saying that he could be back as early as next weekend when Dortmund faces Arminia Bielefeld, which is also before the roster comes out. So that is good news. However, let's remain cautiously optimistic. I don't know if Reina will make the roster. We'll see. He would have to at least play against Arminia Bielefeld next weekend. I don't know, at least 30 minutes. Next up on the list is Serginho Dest from Barcelona. On Sunday, Dest started off on the bench and came in at the 85th minute for Barcelona during their 2-1 win over Elche in La Liga. Now, he came in for Dani Alves late in the game when Barcelona had the 2-1 lead. They just had gotten the 2-1 lead. Dani Alves is not registered in the Europa League, so Serginho Dest is expected to start during the midweek, unless 
Xavi comes with some of his nonsense ideas of starting Mingueza at the right back position. Next up is Tyler Adams from RB Leipzig. On Saturday, Tyler Adams stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for RB Leipzig. The past four Bundesliga games, Tyler only played 68 minutes total, which is very, very low. The only positive is that he will be very well rested for the US men's national team matches at the end of the month. But then, there's one more thing that worries me, is he could just be in poor form if he's never playing. So, sorry for the constant mentions of World Cup qualifying window coming up. It's just my anxiety kicking in. Okay, now we're going to go by positions and we're going to start with the goalkeeper. So let's talk about Zach Steffen from Manchester City. Zach Steffen is still injured and did not make the bench from Manchester City. And, you know, I'm starting to question his presence at the March camp. Now, Americans abroad aside, Manchester City ran over Manchester United over the weekend. And I just want to put this out because I just want to talk about it. I grew up watching Manchester United dominate Manchester City. But this past decade, it has been rough and it's crazy how things have changed. And Manchester City are actually the big team in Manchester now. And as a current Manchester United fan, it's just fairly disappointing to say the least. We're not done with the goalkeepers yet. Now we're going to talk about Ethan Horvath from Nottingham Forest and Alex Mighton because he's also from Nottingham Forest, but he's a winger. On Friday, Horvath got his third start in a row for Nottingham Forest and went the full 90 minutes during their 1-1 draw with Sheffield United in the English Championship. In the three games he started, Ethan Horvath got two clean sheets and only allowed one goal. But now, Samba's coming back from suspension, so we'll see how this goes. Nottingham Forest does have a game this Monday that won't be included in this video. It'll be on the midweek recap on Thursday or Friday. Hopefully, Ethan Horvath holds on to the starting job with Samba returning. For this match specifically, Ethan Horvath had 37 touches, 74% passing accuracy, 5 saves, 3 saves inside the box. And the goal, it wasn't his fault in my opinion. In regards to Alex Maiten, the English-American winger, he played 12 minutes coming in as a sub for the same match. All right, we're done with the goalkeepers. Now, let's go to the center backs. And let's start John Brooks from Wolfsburg and Kevin Paredes because he also plays for Wolfsburg. On Saturday, John Brooks started and went to full 90 minutes for Wolfsburg during their 1-0 win over Union Berlin in Bundesliga. Now, Kevin Paredes did not make the bench for this one once again. First, he got a clean sheet. John Brooks, that's what I'm talking about. So if he got a clean sheet, that's always good for a defender. Brooks played as a left center back in a back four formation. So essentially two center backs and he was one of them. Usually they do play a back three. So it was good to see him perform in a different tactical approach, more similar to what the U.S. men's national team does and do well. For this match, John Brooks had five clearances, one block shot, one tackle, one one ground duel that he had, the only one. He won two aerial duels that he had. And he had 63 touches with an 83.6 percentage of his passing accuracy. Next up is Chris Richards and Justin Che from Hoffenheim. On Sunday, Chris Richards was not back yet for Hoffenheim despite being back in training. While Justin Che made the bench for Hoffenheim once again and stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes once again. Justin Che has yet to make his debut for Hoffenheim. Now we're still in the center backs. We're going to talk about Eric Palmer Brown from Troy. Troy. You know, I know I said I was the Frenchiest French man to ever French, even though I'm not a French man. Please, if you know French, tell me if I'm saying Troy or Troy correctly. On Sunday, Palmer Brown started and went the full 90 minutes for Troy during their 2-0 win over Bordeaux. Now, Bordeaux have been surprisingly bad this season, sitting in last place in Liga, but this is a massive win for Troy and Palmer Brown as they battle against relegation. He was not heavily involved on the ball in this match, but defensively, he had a very strong game. Next up is Matt Miazga from Deportivo Alaves. He stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Deportivo Alaves. Just the usual. Guys, look, he's not a starter. His minutes tanked and maybe he's not La Liga level. That's what it's looking like. Next up is Mark McKenzie from Genk. Now, McKenzie is in a similar situation to Miazga. Barely plays for Genk, which is very unfortunate. The past four games in Belgium, in the Belgium League, actually, he played a total of 45 minutes only in a game that I believe he was subbed off at halftime when Genk was down versus Underleck. Now a center back that has actually been having a fantastic season, and that's Cameron Carter-Vickers from Celtic. On Sunday, Cameron Carter-Vickers started and went the full 90 minutes for Celtic during their 3-1 win over Livingston in the Scottish Premiership. Now, for the same match, Sebastian Soto came off the bench for Livingston at the 70th minute. So yeah, Soto has been playing in the Scottish Premiership and getting minutes. Next up, and the last center back we're going to be talking about in this video is Nico Carrera from Holstein Kiel in Bundesliga 2. On Friday, Nico Carrera started off on the bench for Holstein Kiel and came in at the 55th minute of the match during their 4-3 loss to Paderborn in the Bundesliga 2. 
and that was his Bundesliga 2 debut. Nico is a 19-year-old Mexican-American that has played for the Pachuca and FC Dallas Academy as part of his development. He has also represented the United States and Mexico in the youth level, so he's most certainly a center back to keep an eye on. All right, now a word from our sponsor, in case you are tired of being spied on by Mark Zuckerberg. Tired of having big tech collecting all your data and spy on you? Well, our sponsor might have the solution to that. NordVPN is the world's best VPN service offering fast connectivity, most servers, and next generation encryption to make sure that everything you do online stays secure. Plus, you can use NordVPN on all your computer and devices no matter the operating system. With NordVPN's unlimited bandwidth, you never have to worry about a slow connection either. And plans start at under $4 per month. So grab your exclusive NordVPN deal right now by going to nordvpn.com slash believe. That is believe as in B-L-E-A-V. Use the code for 70% off on your NordVPN plan plus an additional free month. It's also risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So again, thank you NordVPN for sponsoring the channel. Okay, hopefully now you're safe from being spied and let's keep going on with the video and go to the fullbacks. Let's start with Anthony Robinson and Tim Ream from Fulham. On Saturday, Fulham continued to dominate the English Championship by defeating Blackburn 2-0 at home. For this one, Tim Ream and Robinson went the full 90 minutes once again. Tim Ream got a yellow card and it's safe to say that Fulham will most likely be in the English Premier League next season. Next up is Reggie Cannon from Boa Vista in Portugal. On Saturday, Reggie Cannon started and went the full 90 minutes for Boa Vista as a right center back in a back three formation during their 1-1 draw with Sporting Braga. Yes, at this point, we can just say it. Reggie Cannon has become a center back at the club level. Next fullback on the list is Brian Reynolds from Kortrijk in Belgium. On Saturday, Brian Reynolds started and went the full 90 minutes for Kortrijk during their 3-2 loss to St. Union in the Belgium League. Next up is Joe Scali from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Or just Borussia not Dortmund. On Saturday, Joe Scali was back in the starting 11 for Borussia not Dortmund and went the full 90 minutes during their 3-2 loss to Stuttgart. Now, the main reason he played here was Leiner was out with an illness. Joe Scali played as a right back for this one. He was not to blame on any of Stuttgart's goals. Maybe the second goal he could have done better, but the entire team could. The defense was just a mess. He did fine defensively, but was kind of poor on the ball and was even not involved that much on the ball during the game while in possession. For this match, Joe Scali had two clearances, one block shot, two interceptions, three tackles four dribbles passed he won five out of 12 ground duels he had just 44 touches and a low 58 percent passing accuracy now the last fullback that i want to talk about in this video is jonathan gomez from real sociedad b or a i don't know on Saturday, Real Sociedad played Real Madrid and Jonathan Gomez did not make the bench this time, which means he's likely with the B team, which they played this Monday when the video is out. So we'll update you on his performance on Monday in case he plays for the B team this Friday on the midweek recap. Okay, that does it for the fullbacks. So let's go to the midfielders and we'll start with Yunus Musa from Valencia. On Saturday, Musa started and played 73 minutes for Valencia during their 3-1 win over Granada in La Liga. I was only able to watch the first half, and in the first half, Musa was playing as a central midfielder slash 8 in a 3-man midfield where dual 8s were play being played with a 6 behind him. He would also drift a bit wide at times, almost looking like a Mazala. He did set up a very nice play that could have been an assist in the first half, but the Valencia player blew it, and I mean, he was offsides anyway, so it wouldn't have counted. Yunus Musa had 33 touches, 76.5 percent passing accuracy one key pass won only one of his six ground duels had one clearance and three interceptions the minutes have been very good for Yunus Musa lately I hope to see him continue to play that eight role that we saw this game but for his development the minutes he's getting for Valencia in La Liga and the Copa del Rey are simply fantastic and what I'll say is that I'm actually fully expecting for him to have a breakout season next year now, Johnny Cardoso from Internacional in Brazil. On Sunday, Johnny started off on the bench and came in halfway through the second half for Internacional after leaving a game at halftime during the midweek due to an illness. So it was good to see him get some minutes. Regardless, Johnny has been picking up some good momentum for Internacional, but he still needs to lock in the starting job. When he does start for Internacional, he's been playing as a dual six, dual pivot six on a 4-2-3-1 formation. He's one of the sixes. So that's just something I wanted to put out for you guys because I know many people can't follow the Brazilian state championships. Now let's talk about the Venezia boys, Tenor Tessman and Gianluca Busio. So that's where one of the bad news come in. On Sunday, Busio was not available for Venezia as he did tweak 
his hamstring. It does not seem serious, but it is a little bit worrisome since the USMNT camp is approaching. I was told that it was a slight tweak and he should be all right. But these muscle injuries can be tricky, man. We know about that. Now, as for Tanner Testman, he started off on the bench and came in for Venezia at the 75th minute during their 4-1 loss to Sassuolo. When he came in, it was already 4-1. Now, Venezia are currently in danger of getting relegated as they currently sit three points into the relegation zone with one game to play. If they win that game, they will tie in points with Cagliari. By the way, we do have the interview probably coming out this week or next week with the Busio brothers, Matteo and Gianluca Busio. And Gianluca Busio does address what it's like to battle against relegation in Europe, right? The pressure and all of that he talks about in the interview. Hopefully, it's out this week. I'll let you guys know later on. Now, as Watke would say, our little Brendan from RB Salzburg. On Saturday, Brendan Aronson started off on the bench and came in at the 61st minute for RB Salzburg during their 4-0 win over Altak in the Austrian Bundesliga. Now, many other players were benched, such as Adeyemi as well, for example, as RB Salzburg prepares for their most important game in club history to be played this Tuesday against Bayern for the Champions League round of 16. The second leg after the first match was one, a 1-1 draw in Austria. Now, just imagine if RB Salzburg advances. It would be nuts. Next up is Julian Green and Tim Tillman from Firth in Bundesliga. On Saturday, Tim Tillman started and played 82 minutes for Firth as Julian Green came in for Tim Tillman at the 82nd minute. Now, Firth lost this match to Bohem 2-1. Next up is Luca De La Torre from Heracles in Eredivisie. On Sunday, Luca De La Torre started and went a full 90 minutes for Heracles during their 3-1 loss to PSV in the Dutch League. I was not able to watch this match, but based off the heat map, it looks like Luca De La Torre played as an 8 which for the March camp, the United States might need him to play as an eight. So this is good to see. For this game, Luca had 53 touches, 79% passing accuracy, won seven out of 12 ground duels and lost possession 16 times. Let's also not forget that PSV is a high quality opponent. The next midfielder is Cole Bassett from Feyenoord, also in Netherlands. Cole Bassett stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Feyenoord over the weekend. He has been available since arriving for five of the Divisa games, but so far he has played a grand total of five minutes across all five matches. Now the last midfielder, Dwayne Holmes from Huddersfield. On Friday, Holmes started and played 71 minutes for Huddersfield during their 3-0 win over Peter Bro in the English Championship. All right, that does it for the midfielders, and now we're going to the forwards. Now before we start the forwards, as we're getting to the end of the video, make sure to hit that like button that I already requested or dislike button. Unfortunately, I'm not a dictator here in this channel, so I can't force you to do anything. But you know, you help me, I help you. That's how it works. Actually, <laughs> I don't think I help you, so... Just help me by hitting that like button right now. Now let's start with Timothy Weah from Lille. On Sunday, Weah stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Lille during their 4-0 win over Claremont Foot. So it's kind of bad that Tim Weah got no minutes, but at least Jonathan David scored. And I guess we could count Jonathan David as an American abroad. I mean, he was born in the U.S., so go America. Next up is Conrad de la Fuente from Olympique, Marseille. On Sunday, Conrad started off on the bench and stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Marseille during their 1-0 loss to Monaco at home in Ligue 1. When your team needs a goal and you stay on the bench the full 90 minutes while being an attacker, that's not a good sign. And the bad news, or something we should at least be worried about, were that this week there were reports that came out that Sampaoli has been questioning Conrad de la Fuente's professionalism which is the reason apparently why his minutes tanked and sometimes he's even been left out of the game day roster. The talent is there, but if those reports are true and it does continue, I don't see his career going well. Okay, now let's go back to Germany and let's talk about Ricardo Pepe and George Bello as Augsburg faced Armenia Bielenfeld over the weekend. And this was a direct relegation battle on Saturday we had the battle between Armenia Bielenfield and Augsburg. For this one, Augsburg got the best out of it with a 1-0 win. As for Pepe, he stayed on the bench the full 90 for Augsburg, and George Bello came off the bench for Armenia Bielenfield at the 76th minute. The good news is both teams are currently out of the relegation zone. By a bit. Just by a little bit. But it still counts. Okay, now Matthew Hoppe from Mallorca. On Sunday, Hoppy stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Mallorca during their 4-3 loss to Celta de Vigo. Now look, there have been reports saying that Hoppy is their best player in training sessions and blah, blah, blah. But please, please, let's, let's stop believing nonsense. That just can't be true. Do we really think a struggling Mallorca that paid a lot of money for a player would not play him if he's the best player in the training sessions? I'm sorry, I just can't believe this. I think it's pretty safe to say that this has been a bad transfer. And I also think it's 
pretty safe to say that we know who's spreading these rumors. And it's not Hoppy and it's not the US media. It's, well, I'm not going to say who it is, but you guys probably know by now. You know, sometimes agents can give the wrong information on purpose. That's all I'm saying. Next up is Nicolas Joachini from Montpellier in Ligue 1. On Sunday, Joachini started off on the bench and came in at the 81st minute for Montpellier during their 2-0 loss to Nantes in Liga. Now, Josh Sargent from Norwich. On Saturday, Josh Sargent started and went to full 90 minutes for Norwich during their 3-1 loss to Brentford. Sargent played wide, as he mostly does, especially when Pookie is playing. For this match, Josh Sargent had 41 touches, 79% passing accuracy, one key pass, won 3 out of 7 ground duels, 3 out of 6 aerial duels, and was fouled twice. I would honestly bring him into the next US Men's National Team camp as a center forward and winger option. Now Pifok from BSC Young Boys in Switzerland. A guy that just can't stop scoring. On Saturday, Pifok started and went to full 90 minutes for BSC Young Boys during their 2-2 draw with Luzerm in the Swiss League. He scored their first goal in this match with a pretty nice header. It was a very nice one. See? He does not only score off PKs and tap-ins. Now Christian Ramirez from Aberdeen in Scotland. On Saturday, Ramirez started and went to full 90 minutes for Aberdeen during their 1-0 loss to Rangers in the Scottish Premiership. Now for the same game, James Sands stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Rangers. And as I said in the last episode, so far, James Sands' transfer from New York City FC to Rangers has been a major disappointment as his minutes have been horrible. Also, it comes to show how tough it is to judge a league when you compare it to another league. Sands was a standout player in MLS, but he can't get minutes for Rangers, while Ramirez was not a standout player in MLS and has been having a pretty good season in Scotland. Sure, it's hard to break through the Rangers squad, much harder than Aberdeen, but you get my point. It's not just about the strength of the league, it's also how competitive the club you're playing for. So in terms of competitiveness, it was a good challenge for James Sands, even if the Scottish Premiership is worse than MLS in your opinion. But the minutes have been horrible, so maybe the transfer wasn't that good. We'll find out in the next few months. Last but not least, there's one player that I want to address. And it's not really because of his performance. It's because he might switch the U.S. men's national team. And that's Fulleting Balogun from Arsenal, but he plays for Middlesbrough. He's loaned to Middlesbrough from Arsenal. There were reports out that Balogun is ready to switch to the United States from England. Now, there's no confirmation, so we can't confirm it right now. But at the same time, even if he switches, he still has to earn a spot in our team. His performances in the English Premier League were not good. And in the championship for Middlesbrough, they have been okay. So it's good if we get him. But until he proves otherwise, he is not a game changer. That is something that I want to make clear right away. All right, everyone, I want to thank you all very much for watching. That does it for this episode. I apologize if I looked a little bit tired. It's been a rough few days with work, the Charlotte trip and everything. We finished the scenarios video measuring the probability of the U.S. men's national team qualifying or not to the World Cup. That'll be out this week or it's out already. I don't even know. It might be released this Monday. So keep an eye on that. I also want to thank everyone that has become a member of the channel the past few days. It's been amazing. Great support. Thank you very much everyone that became a member of tactical manager tv and everyone that checked out our merch as well go check out the merch the links on the description go buy your own burr ball t-shirt i want to thank you all very much for watching and have a great day